na mayai lingine halina so this boy remembered huyu kijana akakumbuka today let me choose that bowl with no eggs leo ngoja nichague bakuli lisilokuwa na mayai because there are two eggs under the noodles kwa sababu kuna mayai mawili chini ya tambi so he told the father i want that bowl with no eggs akamwambia baba yake nataka bakuli isiyokuwa na mayai so the father said take it baba yake akamwambia chukua ule as he dip into the bowl alipokuwa akienda chini ya ile bakuli there were no eggs hakukuwa na mayai so the father had the egg kwa hiyo baba akala mayai so he was so disappointed akasikitika sana and the father told him baba mtu akamwambia you did not get anything because you were greedy haukupata kitu chochote kwa sababu ulikuwa mchoyo you are very covetous wewe ni mtu mwenye umimi sana so the next day kwa siku iliyofuatia same two bowls bakuli zile zile mbili one with egg and the other without eggs moja ilikuwa na mayai na nyingine haina mayai so now the father asking baba akamwambia son which bowl do you want unataka bakuli ipi and the boy looked at both the bowls akaangalia bakuli zote mbili and he remembered his two experiences akakumbuka uzoefu wake wa mara mbili zilizopita he looked at the father and he said akamwangalia baba akasema he said papa baba you choose for me wewe nichagulie I will not choose my way. Sita chagua kwa namna yangu. Baba you choose. Baba wewe ni chagulie. So the father was so happy. Basi baba akafurahi sana. He pushed the bowl with an egg to him. Akamsukumia bakuli yenye mayai. And when the boy dipped the bowl, na yule kijana alipoendelea kula chini zaidi, there was another two eggs under the bowl. Kulikuwa na mayai mengine mawili chini ya bakuli. So he had three eggs. Kwa kana na mayai matatu. So when he died to self. Kwa maana alipokuwa anamaliza mwenyewe. And he sought the will of God. Na akautafuta Father allowed the father's will to guide him. Au kuruhusu makusudi ya baba yake kumuongoza. He received greater than what he could ask for. Alipokea kikubwa zaidi ya kile ambacho aliomba. Amen. Amen. This was the problem in Israel. Hili lilikuwa tatizo huko Israel. Instead of allowing God to guide them. Badala ya kumruhusu Mungu kuwaongoza, they wanted to run their own lives. Walitaka kuishi maisha yao wenyewe. As a result they were always falling down. Na matokeo yake kila siku walikuwa wakianguka. As you are hearing this, ulikiwa unasikia hii, I'm sure you face the same issues in your own life. Nina uhakika unakutana na mambo ya namna hiyo hiyo kwenye maisha yako. You are tripping and you're falling. Unatereza na kuanguka. You are not getting the best in life. Haupati yaliyo bora katika maisha. The reason is because you are choosing the wrong things. Sababu ni kwamba unachagua mambo yasiyo sahihi. You are doing the choosing. Wewe unafanya uchaguzi. Instead of allowing God to choose for you. Badala ya kumruhusu Mungu akuchagulie wewe. The Bible tells us. Biblia inatuambia in Isaiah chapter 46. Katika Isaya sura Yes, sita. God knows the end from the beginning. Mungu anaujua mwisho tangu mwanzo. What is the end? Mwisho ni nini? He can see. Yeye anaweza kuona. But you can't see. Lakini wewe huwezi kuona. So if you allow him to choose for you. Kwa hiyo ukimruhusu akuchagulie, direct your paths. Kukuongoza njia yako and all your path will be full of peace. Na njia yako yote itajaa amani. The Bible says Biblia inasema In the book of Proverbs Katika kitabu cha Mithali Commit all your ways unto God Mpatie Bwana njia zako zote Let him guide you Mwache yeye akuongoze Let him direct you Mwache yeye akupe uelekeo When you do that Na ukifanya hivyo All your ways will be successful Naye atanyosha mapito yako That does not mean there won't be challenges Haimaanishi kwamba kutakuwa na challenges There will be challenges zitakuwepo changamoto but god will be standing right beside you lakini mungu atakuwa amesimama pembeni yako holding your hand akikushika mkono he said you are not alone na kusema hauko mwenyewe i'm walking with you ninatembea na wewe amen amen you are not alone hauko peke yako i'm walking with you ninatembea na wewe there was this little boy kulikuwa na huyu mtoto who wants to learn how to ride a bicycle ambaye alitaka kujifunza jinsi ya kuendesha baiskeli and the father told him 
na baba akamwambia Okay come I'll teach you how to ride the bicycle Njoo nitakufundisha jinsi ya kuendesha bicycle So the father bought him a nice bicycle Basi baba akamnunulia bicycle nzuri And help him to sit on the bicycle Akamsaidia kuketi kwenye bicycle And the father was standing by the right side Na baba alikuwa amesimama upande wa kuume And help him to hold the handle Akimsaidia jinsi ya kushika so the, so the boy learn how to hold the handle. Kwa hiyo yule kijana akajifunza jinsi ya kushika uskani. And how to keep the handle straight. Na jinsi gani ya kunyoosha uskani. So after that first lesson. Kwa mara baada ya somo la kwanza. Then the father said. Baba akamwambia. Okay now you learn how to write yourself. Sasa ujifunze jinsi ya kuendesha mwenyewe. The boy was so scared. Lakini yule mtoto alikuwa akiogopa sana. So the baba told him. Basi baba akamwambia. I'm right here. Niko hapa. So the baba went behind. Baba akarudi nyuma. And hold the back portion of the bicycle. Akaishikilia bicycle kwa nyuma. And the boy was so scared. Na yule kijana alikuwa anaogopa. So the baba said. Baba akasema. Don't worry son. Usiogope. I'm right behind you. Niko nyuma yako. So the baba held the back of the bicycle. Kwa baba akashikilia bicycle nyuma. And the boy slowly began to ride. Na yule mtoto kidogo kidogo akaanza kuendesha. And the baba was holding the bike the back and moving with him. Baba alikuwa ameshikilia bicycle nyuma akitembea. And after some time baada ya muda kidogo the baba saw that the boy can balance himself now baba akaona kwamba kijana anaweza ku balance mwenyewe but every now and then na kila mara the boy will turn at the back and see if the father was still there yule kijana alikuwa akigeuka kuona kama baba yake yuko and when he saw the father na mara alipomuona baba it gave him great assurance yuko inampa uhakika mkubwa oh i will not fall down sitaanguka because baba is there kwa sababu baba yuko i can go confidently naweza kwenda kwa ujasiri and that gave him the confidence to ride the bike na hiyo ilimpa ujasiri wa kuendesha bicycle. And when the baba saw that he was not balancing well, na mara baba alipoona kwamba sasa anaweza kukaa sawa, he let go of the hand. Akaachilia. And the boy didn't know that the baba had let go. Na kijana hakujua kama baba yake amemwacha. Was riding confidently. Alikuwa anaendesha na ujasiri. Why he was riding confidently? Kwa nini alikuwa akiendesha kwa ujasiri? Because he know the baba is behind him. Kwa sababu anajua baba yuko nyuma yake. The baba never leaves him nor forsakes him. Baba yake hamwachi wala kumpungukia. In the same way. Vivyo hivyo. When you trust God with all your heart. Ukimwamini Mungu kwa moyo wako wote. When you commit your life unto him. Ukimpa maisha yako. He will not let you down. Hata kuangusha. Amen. Amen. He's right there behind you. Yuko hapo nyuma yako. Right there behind you. Yuko hapo nyuma yako. Pushing you. Akikusukuma. Cheering you. Akikusukuma. Urging you to go on and on. Na kukwambia uzidi kusonga mbele. So firstly the church will be judged. Kwa hiyo kwanza kanisa litahukumiwa. Secondly, pili, the ministers of God will be judged. Watumishi wa Mungu watahukumiwa. This is very general. Hii ni kwa ujumla sana. All over this nation. Katika taifa lote hili. The ministers of God will be judged. Watumishi wa Mungu watahukumiwa. How will they be judged? Watahukumiwaje? Then five areas. Katika maeneo matano. Number 1. Moja. They'll be judged for their carelessness. Watahukumiwa kwa kuto kujali kwao. Careless way of doing the works of God. Kuifanya kazi ya Mungu pasipo kujali. When you are entrusted to do the works of God. Ukiwa umeaminiwa kufanya kazi ya Mungu, whether it is big work or small work, iwe ni kazi kubwa ama kazi ndogo, you do it with all your heart. Lazima uifanye kwa moyo wako wote. You don't be careless in doing the works of God. Usifanye kazi ya Mungu bila kujali kujali. So, the first area of judgment will be carelessness. Kwa eneo la kwanza ni kuto kujali. Secondly, na pili, laziness. Uvi, uzembe. The Bible says Biblia inasema In Isaiah chapter 56 Katika Isaya sura ya 56 The Lord God says concerning his shepherds Bwana anasema juu ya wachungaji wake My shepherds they are lazy dogs Wachungaji wangu ni wazembe My shepherds they are dumb dogs Ni wazembe They lie the whole day and do not bark Wanalala siku nzima hata hawabweki Laziness Uzembe God entrusts us to do the works of God. Mungu ametuamini kuifanya kazi ya Mungu. To feed the flock. 
kualisha kondoo wake in order to feed the flock ili kulisha kondoo wake a shepherd will lead his flock to look for good pastures mchungaji ataongoza kundi lake kwenda kutafuta malisho mazuri he doesn't just bring them to where just any grass is hawapeleki tu mahali popote penye majani he doesn't bring them to dry grass hawapeleki kwenye majani yaliyokauka but fresh green grass lakini majani yaliyo mabichi in the same manner kwa namna hiyo hiyo a shepherd must always be in his church mchungaji lazima siku zote awepo kanisani kwake not kwa. going around the whole world preaching the gospel sio akizunguka duniani kote kuhubiri injili that is not a shepherd's job hiyo sio kazi ya mchungaji today many pastors do that sasa hivi wachungaji wengi wanafanya hivyo instead of looking after their own church they are going around the whole world badala ya kutazama kuangalia kanisa lao wenyewe wanazunguka duniani kote that is not the job of a shepherd hiyo sio kazi ya mchungaji the job of a shepherd is to look after his flock kazi ya mchungaji ni ku tunza kundi lake so the lazy ministers of god will be judged kwa hiyo watumishi wa zembe watahukumiwa number 3 number 3 ministers who do not seek The will of God will be judged. Watumishi wasiotafuta kusudi la Mungu watahukumiwa. Matthew chapter 7. Mathayo sura ya 7. Verses 21 to 23. Mstari wa 21 hadi 23. A group of ministers comes and stands before the judgment seat of God. Kundi la watumishi wanakuja wamesimama mbele siku ya Bwana siku ya hukumu. And the Lord Jesus tells them. Na Bwana anawaambia. Who are you? Ninyi ni nani? I do not know who you are. Siwajui. Go to hell. Nendeni kwenye moto wa milele. Those ministers were shocked. Wale watumishi walishtushwa. They, they said Lord Jesus. Wakasema Bwana Yesu. How can you say you do not know who we are? Unawezaje kusema hautujui? We preach in your name. Tumehubiri kwa jina lako. So they were preachers. Kwa hiyo walikuwa ni wahubiri. We cast out demons in your name. Tumefukuza mapepo kwa jina lako. So they had deliverance ministry. Kwa hiyo walikuwa na huduma ya ukombozi. We heal the sick in your name. Tuliponya wagonjwa kwa jina lako. So they were healing evangelists. Walikuwa na huduma ya uponyaji. We did signs and wonders in your name. Tumefanya ishara na maajabu kwa jina lako. So they had miracle working ministries. Walikuwa na huduma ya miujiza. We prophesize in your name. Tulitoa unabii kwa jina lako. So they were prophets. Kwa hiyo walikuwa manabii. So these were not ordinary ministers. Kwa hawa hawakuwa watumishi wa kawaida. So when they boasted of their achievements. Kwa hiyo mara walipojisifia kwa ya mafanikio yao. The Lord yao, Jesus said. Bwana Yesu anawaambia. Yes, you did all that. Ndio mlifanya yote hayo. Now look at that. Lakini angalia sasa. The Lord Jesus acknowledged their works. Bwana Yesu anakubali kazi zao. Then he said. Alafu anasema. But you did not do my father's will. Lakini hamkufanya kusudi la baba yangu. You did those works. Mlifanya hizo kazi. You did all that to build your own empire. Mlifanya yote hayo kwa ajili ya kujenga utawala wenu wenyewe. You build your own kingdom. Mlijenga ufalme wenu wenyewe. You did the ministries for money. Mlifanya huduma kwa ajili ya pesa. For fame. Kwa ajili ya umaarufu. For glory. Kwa ajili ya utukufu. And you made the people of God your slaves. Na mkawafanya watu wa Mungu kuwa watumwa wenu. You suck their blood. Mmenyonya damu zao. You milk them of their money. Mmewanyonya pesa zao. While you became rich. Na nyinyi mkiwa matajiri. You built your own name. Mmejenga majina yenu wenyewe. Therefore you did not do my father's will. Kwa hivyo hamjafanya kusudi la baba yangu. Go to hell. Enendeni kuzimi. A whole lot of ministers of God were sent to hell. Kwa hiyo watumishi wengi wa Mungu wakawa wametupwa kwenye moto wa milele. My dearly beloved brothers and sisters and ministers of god ndugu zangu wapendwa na watumishi wa mungu that's a great warning for us hilo ni onyo kubwa sana kwetu we must always seek the will of god siku zote lazima tutafute kusudi la mungu number 4 number 4 those ministers who seek evil and plot evil wale watumishi wanaotafuta uovu na kupandikiza uovu they will be judged watahukumiwa seek the evil and plot evil against other ministers and against other believers wale wanaotafuta uovu na kupandikiza uovu baina ya watumishi wengine na waaminio you go and seek the power of witchcraft unaenda kutafuta nguvu ya uchawi you go and seek power from the evil witch doctors unaenda kutafuta nguvu kutoka kwa mganga wa kienyeji there are many many christian ministers 
in Africa who do that. Kuna watumishi wengi wa wa Kristo ambao wako Afrika wanafanya hivyo. Those who do that. Wao wanaofanya hivyo. Will be judged and cast into hell. Watahukumiwa na kutupwa kwenye ziwa la moto. Not only cast into hell. Sio tu kutupwa kwenye ziwa la moto. You will even drop dead in your pulpit. Lakini pia utaanguka ukafa madhabahuni pako. Let me give you a biblical proof for that. Ngoja nikupe ushahidi wa kibiblia wa hilo jambo. In Ezekiel chapter 11. Katika Ezekiel sura ya 11. Verses 1 to 13. Mstari wa kwanza hadi wa 13. The prophet Ezekiel was praying. Nabii Ezekiel alikuwa akiomba. And the spirit of the lord came upon him na roho ya mungu akamjilia juu yake and his spirit came out of his body na roho yake ikatoka kwenye mwili wake and god says na mungu akasema son of man e mwanadamu set your face towards jerusalem itazame yerusalem and when he set his face towards jerusalem na alipoitazama yerusalem he saw evil in the temple in jerusalem akaona uovu kwenye hekalu huko yerusalem and he asked the lord who are these na akamuuliza bwana ha ni kina nani so the spirit of the lord told him roa bwana akamwambia these are the elders in the temple in jerusalem hawa ni wazee wa kanisa la yerusalem god said look at them akasema watazame and he saw them doing evil na akaona wakifanya uovu they were plotting evil walikuwa wakipandikiza uovu so when ezekiel saw that kwa hiyo ezekiel alipoona hivyo god took his spirit from babylon and brought him to jerusalem mungu akachukua roho yake kutoka babeli akaileta yerusalem his spirit was geographically transported from one place in babylon to another place in Jerusalem. Roho yake ilisafirishwa kijiografia kutoka eneo moja kwenda eneo lingine, kutoka Babeli kwenda Yerusalem. And he stood there in the temple before these evil elders and his witness the evil they were doing. Na akasimama pale hekaluni mbele ya hawa wazee na akaona uovu waliokuwa wakifanya. And the chief among them is a man called Palatia. Na mkuu kati yao ni mtu alikuwa akiitwa Palatia. And God told Ezekiel na Mungu akamwambia Ezekiel Now you prophesy God's judgment upon Palatia. Na utoe unabii juu ya Palatia. Now I want you to understand one thing. Nataka uelewe jambo moja. Ezekiel was not there in person. Ezekiel hakuwepo pale kimwili. He was there standing in the spirit. Alikuwa amesimama pale katika roho. But when he prophesied God's judgment. Na kisha akatoa unabii wa huyo hukumu. The Bible says. Biblia inasema in the natural palatial drop dead katika dakika hiyo hiyo palotia alianguka akafa in the same manner kwa namna hiyo hiyo god will judge the ministers of god mungu atawahukumu watumishi wa mungu and they will drop dead in the pulpit na wataanguka wakafa madhabahuni but medical science may say lakini ishara za kidaktari zinaweza kusema they died suddenly of a heart attack kwamba alikufa ghafla kutokana na shinikizo la damu that's what medical science will say hicho ndicho ambacho madaktari watasema but the real truth is lakini ukweli halisi ni god has judged the mungu. evil plotters and the evil workers mungu amehukumu wapandikizaji wa uovu na watendakazi wa uovu This will take place. Hili litatokea. If the ministers of God do not repent. Kama watumishi wa Mungu wasipotubu. This will happen. Hili litatokea. The judgment of God will fall. Hukumu ya Mungu itawajilia. Number 5. Number 5. The proud and arrogant ministers of God. Watumishi wenye majivuno. God will judge them. Mungu atawahukumu. Very proudful. Wale wenye majivuno. Very prideful. Wale wenye majivuno. Very arrogant. Wale wanaojisikia You know this was the problem with Nebuchadnezzar. Hili lilikuwa ni tatizo la Nebuchadnezzar. God spoke to him. Mungu alizungumza naye. It was God who raised up King Nebuchadnezzar. Ni Mungu ndiye aliyemuinua mfalme Nebuchadnezzar. God strengthened him. Mungu alimtia nguvu. God gave him the power to conquer many nations. Akampa nguvu za ku shinda mataifa mengi and he built the babylon empire naye akaijenga ile milki ya babeli the bible says it was god who gave him the strength biblia inasema alikuwa ni mungu aliyempa hizo nguvu and god also used him to punish and captive israel 
na Mungu alimtumia yeye kuadhibu na kuiteka Israeli. But at the height of his success. Lakini akiwa katika kiwango cha juu kabisa cha mafanikio yake. Nebuchadnezzar became very proud and arrogant. Nebuchadnezzar akaingia na majivuno. He began to think that by the might of his hands he had conquered the whole world. Akaanza kufikiria kwamba kwa mkono wake wa nguvu ameweza kushinda dunia yote. If you read the book of Daniel. Ukisoma kitabu cha Danieli. He was warned by God three times. Alionywa na Mungu mara tatu. First in chapter 2. Ya kwanza katika sura ya pili. Secondly in chapter 3. Ya pili katika sura ya tatu. Thirdly in chapter 4. Na ya tatu katika sura ya nne. Three times he was warned by God to humble himself. Ameonywa mara tatu kujinyenyekesha. But he refused to humble himself. Lakini alikataa. And when the third time he was warned Na alipoonywa kwa mara ya tatu The prophet Daniel advised him Nabii Daniel akamshauri Said great king Akamwambia mfalme mkuu Please humble yourselves Tafadhali jishushe and do good works Na ufanye kazi njema Help the poor Wasaidie maskini Give your money to the charities Toa pesa zako kwa ajili ya kufanya kazi Feed the widows Msaada Walishe wajane Clothe the orphans Wavalishe yatima He advised him all that. Alimpa ushauri wa yote haya. But Nebuchadnezzar did not listen to all that. Lakini Nebuchadnezzar akusikiliza hayo yote. Exactly one year later. Mwaka mmoja baadaye. He walked on the top of his palace. Akatembea katika kasri yake. Looked at his great palace. Akitazama kasri yake. And he said. Akasema He said this in his arrogance. Akasema haya katika majivuno yake. This is my great palace that I made. Hii ni ikulu yangu kubwa ambayo nimeitengeneza. By the might of my hands I made all this. Kwa nguvu ya mkono wangu nimefanya yote haya. The moment he said that. Na mara aliposema hivyo. A voice came from heaven. Sauti ilitoka mbinguni. Nebuchadnezzar! Nebuchadnezzar! Because you refuse to humble yourself. Kwa sababu umekataa kujishusha. You are judged today. Unahukumiwa leo. In an instant, kwa sekunde, his entire human body was transformed into a wild bird. Mwili wake wote ukawa umebadilishwa kama hayawani wa nikani. All you wonderful people living in Africa, you know that the witch doctors have the power to change their shape from human to an animal. Nyinyi wote ambao watu wazuri ambao mko Afrika mnafahamu kwamba mganga wa kienyeji anazo nguvu za kumbadilisha mtu kutoka kuwa binadamu mpaka kuwa mnyama. Am I right everybody? Je, niko sahihi? They have that power. Wanao hiyo nguvu. And that's what this Bible says here. Na hicho ndicho Biblia inasema hapa. The DNA and the entire body of Nebuchadnezzar was changed. Kwamba vina saba na mwili mzima wa Nebuchadnezzar ulibadilika. He became a wild bird. Akawa kama hayawani wa mtuni. For how long was he judged? Kwa muda gani alihukumiwa? 7 years. Kwa miaka saba. 7 years he was judged. Kwa miaka saba alihukumiwa. The proud and the arrogant. Majivuno na kujigamba. They will be punished and judged by God. Litahukumiwa na Mungu. This is how the ministers of God will be judged. Hivi ndivyo watumishi wa Mungu watakavyohukumiwa. This afternoon the Lord very specifically told me about one other matter. Mchana wa leo Bwana ameniambia wazi juu ya jambo moja. He came to me and he said very clearly. Alikuja kwangu akaniambia wazi kabisa. He said tell the people this warning. Waambie watu onyo hili. That the false prophets in this nation and in this continent will be judged kwamba manabii wa uongo katika taifa hili na katika katika bara hili watahukumiwa Let me give you some examples Ngoja nikupe mfano The Bible tells us Biblia inatuambia False prophets were judged in the Old Testament. Manabii wa uongo walihukumiwa katika agano la kale. Jeremiah chapter 14 verse 14. Yeremia sura ya 14 mstari wa 14. Chapter 23 verse 13. Sura ya 23 mstari wa 13. And in the New Testament we read Na katika agano jipya tunasoma that the Lord Jesus Christ warned us against about false prophets. Kwamba Bwana wetu Yesu Kristo ametuonya kuhusiana na manabii wa uongo. In Matthew chapter 7 verse 15. Katika Mathayo sura ya 7 mstari wa 15. Verse 20 chapter 24 verse 11 and verse 24. Sura ya 24 mstari wa 11 mpaka 24. 
and we read in the first century early church na tunasoma katika kanisa la karne ya kwanza there were also false prophets in the church pia kulikuwa na manabii wa uongo katika kanisa second peter chapter 2 verse 1 petro wa pili sura ya pili mstari wa kwanza First John chapter 4 verse 1. Waraka wa kwanza wa Yohana sura ya 4 mstari wa kwanza. The apostles Peter and John warned the church about false prophets. Mtume Petro na Yohana wamelionya kanisa kuhusiana na manabii wa uongo. My dearly beloved brothers and sisters. Ndugu zangu wapendwa. The Lord Jesus Christ exactly and specifically said to me. Bwana Yesu wazi kabisa na kwa sababu maalum amesema nami False prophets in this land and in this continent will be judged Kwamba manabii wa uongo katika nchi hii na katika bara hili watahukumiwa They will not be allowed to last much longer Hawataruhusiwa kudumu kwa muda mrefu Jeremiah chapter 14 Yeremia sura ya 14 verse 15 Mstari wa 15 chapter 23 sura ya 23 verses 30 to 31 Mstari wa 30 mpaka 31 For too long the false prophets had their lying tongues out Kwa kipindi kirefu sana manabii wa uongo wamekuwa na vinywa vyao vikisema uongo nje And their tongues were very long Na ndimi zao zimekuwa ndefu sana And it was wriggling like a serpent's tongue Na zimekuwa zikicheza kama ulimi wa nyoka I am telling you what I am seeing in the spirit right now Ninakwambia kile kitu ambacho ninakiona katika roho sasa hivi This is how the Lord Jesus sees these false prophets Hivi ndivyo Bwana Yesu anavyowaona hawa manabii wa uongo Their tongues are very long like a serpent's ndimi zao ni ndefu sana kama ndimi za nyoka and it's wriggling like how the serpent's tongues wriggles na zinacheza kama jinsi ulimi wa nyoka unavyocheza they do not speak by the spirit of god hawaneni sawa sawa na roho wa mungu they speak by the spirit of divination wananena sawa sawa na roho wa udanganyifu the bible tells us biblia inatuambia by their fruits You shall know them. Kwa matunda yao mtawatambua. And the Lord Jesus Christ said very accurately. Na Bwana Yesu akasema kwa usawa kabisa. I did not send these prophets. Sikuwatuma manabii hawa. God did not send them. Mungu hakuwatuma. You read this in Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 23. Nasoma hii katika Yeremia sura ya 23 mstari wa 23. Verse 16. Mstari wa 16. Verse 21. Mstari wa 21. 25 to 26 Mstari wa 25 hadi 26 Chapter 29 Sura ya 29 Verse 8 and 9 Mstari wa 8 na 9 God did not send this prophet Mungu hakuwatuma manabii hao My dearly beloved brothers and sisters Ndugu zangu wapendwa Don't fear these false prophets Usiwaogope hao manabii wa uongo Don't be afraid of their false prophecies Usiwe na hofu juu ya nabii zao za uongo Don't be afraid of their curses. Usiwe na hofu juu ya mambo wanayofanya. Don't be afraid of their judgment prophecies. Usiwe na hofu juu ya hukumu zao za unabii wa uongo. Because the spirit of God is not on their tongue. Kwa sababu roho ya Mungu hayupo katika vinywa vyao. Their mouth is not the mouthpiece of God. Vinywa vyao sio vinywa vya Mungu. It is a spirit of the serpent that is upon their tongue. Ni roho wa nyoka aliye juu ya vinywa vyao. These false prophets commit adulteries, fornications and lies. Manabii hao uongo wameabudu sanamu, wamezini na wamedanganya. This happened in the days of Jeremiah. Hii ilitokea katika siku za Yeremia. Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 14. Yeremia sura ya 23 mstari wa 14. The prophets in that day. Unabii katika wakati ule. They committed fornication. Walifanya zina. Adulteries. Waliabudu sanamu. They slept around with their church members. Walilala na watu wa kanisani mwao. They were taking another man's wives. Walichukua wake wa wao wengine. And they prophesied lies. Na wakatoa unabii wa uongo. The same thing is happening today Vivyo hivyo inatokea sasa In the name of the Lord Jesus Katika jina la Bwana Yesu They lie to you Wamekudanganya They frighten you Wamekutishia They cheat you Wamekudanganya They prophesy wrong things Wamenatoa unabii wa uongo And cause you to sleep with them Na kusababisha ulale nao They lie in the name of the living God Wamedanganya kwa jina la Mungu aliye hai And the Lord Jesus says to you Na Mungu anasema kwa 
yako I did not send them Sikuwatuma And how will God How is God going to judge them Na Mungu anaendaje kuwa hukumu In Mika chapter 3 verses 5 to 6 says Katika Mika sura ya 3 mstari wa 5 na 6 anasema God will strike them blind Mungu atawapiga upofu their spiritual eyes and their natural eyes Macho yao ya kiroho na macho yao ya mwilini The axe of the Lord will come upon on their head Upanga wa Mungu utakuja juu yao kwenye vichwa vyao and they will be struck watapigwa God will even use the judges of the land to judge them Mungu hata atatumia mahakimu wa nchi waweze kuwahukumu Even the governments will arrest them Hata serikali itawakamata The government will arrest them the police will arrest them and throw them behind prison Serikali itawakamata maaskari watawakamata na watafungwa gerezani They will even be driven out of your borders Hata watafukuzwa nje ya mipaka yenu They'll be cast out of the land Watafukuzwa mbali nje ya nchi The spirit of the Lord will do that. Roho wa Mungu atafanya hivyo. The angel of the Lord will chase them out of your borders. Malaika wa Mungu atawafukuza mbali na mipaka yenu. God says he's judging the prof- false prophets in this land. Mungu anasema anawahukumu ma- wale manabii wa uongo kwenye nchi hii. He's judging the false prophets in the continent of Africa. Anawahukumu manabii wa uongo katika bara la Afrika. And the Lord Jesus says. Na Bwana Yesu anasema, "Woe to the false prophets of Africa." Ole wao manabii wa uongo Afrika. Turn your Bibles with me now. Fungua Biblia yako pamoja nami sasa. To the book of Ezekiel the chapter 13. Katika kitabu cha Ezekiel sura ya 13. How is God going to punish them? Mungu atawaadhibuje hao. Take note of this scripture. Iandike mstari huu. Ezekiel chapter 13. Ezekiel sura ya 13. Verses 2 to 9. Mstari wa 2 na wa 3. Son of man prophesied against the prophets of Israel who prophesy and say to those who prophesy out of their own heart hear the word of the lord e mwanadamu utoe unabii juu ya au manabii wanaotoa unabii juu ya now look at this first scripture keep your bible open the first scripture says mstari wa kwanza unasema they prophesy out of their own heart wametoa unabii kutoka kwenye mioyo yao wenyewe they do not prophesy out of the spirit of god hawakutoa unabii juu ya roho kutoka kwa roho wa mungu this is the first problem with them hili ndio tatizo lao la kwanza look at verse 3 angalia mstari wa 3 that says the lord god woe to the foolish prophets who follow their own spirit and have seen nothing hivi ndivyo asemavyo mungu ole wao manabii wajinga wanaofuata roho yao wenyewe wala hawakuona neno lolote problem number 2 tatizo la pili they do not see any vision hawakuona maono yoyote they follow their own spirit walifuata roho zao wenyewe and just simply speak things that come out of their mind na walikuwa wakisema vitu vilivyotoka kwenye akili zao god calls them foolish prophets mungu anawaita manabii wajinga now look at verse 4 sasa angalia mstari wa 4 oh israel your prophets are like foxes in the deserts E Israeli manabii wako wamekuwa kama mbweha mahali palipo ukiwa. Look at how God calls those false prophets. Angalia vile Mungu anawaita hawa manabii wa uongo. He calls them foxes. Anawaita mbweha. What are foxes? Mbweha ni nini? They are very cunning animals. Ni wanyama wadanganyifu sana. They are full of trickery. Wanazo mbinu nyingi sana. That's what these false prophets are. Ndivyo hivi hawa manabii wa uongo walivyo. Very cunning. Ni wa, wa uongo sana. Full of trickery. Wana mbinu nyingi sana. Verse 5. Mstari wa 5. You have not gone up into the gaps to build a wall for the house of Israel to stand in battle on the day of the Lord. Hamkupanda kwenda mahali palipo bomolewa wala hamkutengeneza nyumba ya Israel boma wapate kusimama wapate kusimama vitani katika siku ya Bwana. What does this say? Nini iki anasema? These false prophets have no burden. Hawa manabii wa uongo hawana mzigo. They do not stand in the gap to intercede. Hawasimami palipobomoka kuomba. 
a true prophet of God after prophesizing he will stand in the gap and intercede for the lost Nabii wa kweli wa Mungu baada ya kutoa unabii anasimama palipobomoka na kuomba ili kuziba pengo. When God gives a message of judgment. Mungu akitoa ujumbe wa hukumu. Every true prophet of God hides in their room, bend their knees and they cry unto God. Kila nabii wa kweli wa Mungu anajifungia ndani anapiga magoti na kumlilia Mungu. You read that in the life of the prophet Moses. Unasoma hayo katika maisha ya nabii Musa. In Exodus chapter 32. Katika kutoka sura ya 32. When, when God said he was going to destroy Israel. Mungu aliposema anakwenda kuiharibu Israeli. The prophet Moses knelt down. Nabii Musa alipiga magoti. Took hold of the hand of God and he interceded. Akashika mkono wa Mungu na kuomba. But the false prophets are only after money. Lakini manabii wa uongo wanatafuta pesa tu. They don't care about the perishing souls. Hawajali juu ya roho zinazopotea. They don't care about how you are suffering in your personal life. Hawajali ni kwa jinsi gani unateseka kwenye maisha yako binafsi. Verse 6. Mstari wa 6. They have envisioned futility and false divination saying thus says the Lord but the Lord has not sent them yet they hope that the word may be confirmed. Wameona ubatili na uganga wa uongo hao wasemao Bwana asema lakini Bwana hakuwatuma nao wamewatumainisha watu kwa kuwa neno lile litatimizwa God did not show them any visions. Lakini Mungu hajawaonyesha maono yoyote. God did not send them to any nation or any church with a word from the Lord. Mungu hakuwatuma kwenye taifa lolote ama kanisa lolote na ujumbe kutoka kwa Mungu. They themselves go saying this is what God said. Wao wenyewe walikwenda na kusema hiki ndicho Bwana asemacho. And then somehow they hope the word will the word will come to pass. Na kisha wakatumaini kwamba neno litatimia. But God says to you today. Lakini Mungu anasema kwako leo. God did not send those false prophets. Mungu hakuwatuma hao manabii wa uongo. Be careful of all those who call themselves as prophets. Kuwa makini na hao wanaojiita manabii. God did not send them. Mungu hakuwatuma. Verse 8. Mstari wa 8. Therefore thus says the Lord God. Be- because you have spoken nonsense and envision lies therefore i am indeed against you says the lord basi tazama bwana mungu asema hivi kwa sababu umenena ubatili na kuona uongo basi kwa sababu hiyo mimi ni juu yenu asema bwana look at what this verse says angalia hivi anavyosema these false prophets talk nonsense hao manabii wa uongo wamesema ubatili the aim of every false prophet who pretends to see a vision pretends to have a word is to entrap you lengo la kila nabii wa uongo anayejifanya kuona maono na kutoa unabii ni kukukamata the motive is to enslave you lengo lao ni kukuweka wewe utumwani the motive is to make you feel fearful lengo lao ni kukufanya wewe uwe na hofu motive is to make you dependent on them lengo lao ni kukufanya uwategemee wao you know what every true prophet of god do unajua kitu gani ambacho nabii wa kweli wa mungu anafanya they will turn you back to the living god wanakugeuza umwelekee mungu aliye hai that is the work of every true prophet of god hiyo ndio kazi ya kila nabii wa kweli wa mungu if you read first kings chapter 18 ukisoma wafalme wa kwanza sura ya 18 the nation of israel under king ahab was serving God and Baal. Taifa la Israeli chini ya mfalme Ahabu walikuwa wakimtumikia Mungu na Baal. So the prophet Elijah came and said. Kwa nabii Elia alikuja akasema, How long will you oscillate between two opinion? Je, mpaka lini mtakamkiwatumikia miungu wawili? If God be God, follow him. Kama Mungu ni Mungu basi mfuate yeye. If Baal is God, follow him. Na kama Baal ni Mungu basi mfuate yeye. Don't serve two masters. Msiwatumikie mabwana wawili. A true prophet of God turns the nation back to following the true living God. Nabii wa kweli wa Mungu analibadilisha, analigeuza taifa kumfuata Mungu aliye hai. Not make you be fearful and be under them. Na si kukufanya wewe uwaogope na uwe chini yao. Verse 9. Mstari wa 9. My hand will be against the prophets who envision futility and who divine lies. They shall not be in the assembly of my people, nor be written in the record of the house of Israel. 
nor shall they enter into the land of Israel then you shall know that I am the Lord God na mkono wangu utakuwa juu ya manabii waonao batili na utabiri uongo hawatakuwa katika mashauri ya watu wangu wala hawataandikwa katika maandiko ya nyumba ya Israel wala hawataingia katika nchi ya Israel nanyi mtajua ya kuwa mimi ndimi bwana Mungu now what does this scripture means je mstari una maanisha nini number 1 moja god says my hand will be against such false prophets mungu anasema mkono wangu utakuwa juu ya hao manabii wa uongo because they speak lies kwa sababu wamesema uongo they lie in prophecy wamedanganya katika unabii they lie seeing visions wamedanganya kwa kuona ndoto how will god judge them je mungu atawahukumuje they shall not be in the assembly of the people hawataingia katika kusanyiko la watu god will kick them out of your churches mungu atawafukuza nje ya makanisa yenu this is number 1 hii ni moja number 2 mbili their names will not be written in the record Majina yao hayataandikwa katika kumbukumbu. Their names will even be erased from the book of life. Majina yao pia yatafutwa katika kitabu cha uzima. No shall they enter into the land of Israel. Na wala hataingia katika nchi ya Israel. They shall not enter into the heavenly realm. Hawataingia katika mbingu. When you see all this happening ukiona mambo hayo yote yanatokea. When you see the prophets in Africa being judged Ukiona manabii wa Afrika wanahukumiwa then you shall remember this day hapo utaikumbuka siku ya leo that god sent a prophet in your midst to warn you of what is going to happen in Tanzania and in Africa as a whole kwamba Mungu alituma nabii kwenu kuwaonya juu ya yale yatakayotokea Tanzania na Afrika kwa ujumla that the judgment has now begun in the house of god in africa kwamba hukumu sasa imeanza katika nyumba ya mungu africa my dearly beloved brothers and sisters ndugu zangu wapendwa the spirit of the lord is calling you to put your house in order roho wa mungu anakuita uweke nyumba yako sawa the lion of the tribe of judah is calling you to put your house in order simba wa kabila la yuda anakuita uiweke nyumba yako sawa The Lord is calling you to surrender your gifts before him on his altar. Bwana anakuita usalimishe karama zako mbele zake kwenye madhabahu yake. All those who claim to be prophets. Wale wote wanaojiita kuwa manabii. True prophets of God. Manabii wa kweli wa Mungu. Surrender your eyes to the Lord. Salimisha macho yako kwa Bwana. Surrender your lips to the Lord. Salimisha kinywa chako kwa Bwana. So that it can be truly sanctified. Kusudi iweze kusafishwa kweli kweli. Surrender your ears to the Lord. Salimisha masikio yako kwa Bwana. So that it can be truly sanctified to hear only from the Lord. Kusudi aweze kusafishwa kweli asikie kutoka kwa bwana tu surrender your heart to the lord salimisha moyo wako kwa bwana so that it will not last after any other material things kusudi usije ukatamani mambo yote yoyote yale ya kimwili i feel a strong strong stirring in my spirit right now ninasikia nguvu ya ajabu sana katika roho sasa hivi this judgment upon the false prophets in this land will come speedily hukumu hii juu ya manabii wa uongo katika nchi hii itakuja kwa haraka sana before this year ends kabla mwaka huu haujaisha you will hear of this judgment taking place in this nation and in this continent utasikia hukumu hii ikitendeka katika hili taifa na katika hili bara this judgment will begin from this year hukumu hii itaanza mwaka huu and it will go on until this continent is cleansed of all false cities na itaendelea mpaka hapo bara hili litakapokuwa limesafishwa kutoka katika mambo the mouth of the lord has spoken it and the zeal of the lord will perform it kinywa cha mungu kimetamka na shauku ya mungu itatimiza stand up to your feet simama kwa miguu yako kila mmoja i see the cherubim standing in our midst right now na muona kerubi amesimama katikati yetu sasa and i also see the will that is mentioned in ezekiel in our midst right now na pia ninaona kusudi lililotajwa katika ezekiel katikati yetu hapa these are the judgments of god that have come upon this nation hizi ni hukumu za mungu ambazo zimeijilia taifa hili they are going to go forth all over this country and all over this continent na zitakwenda kuenea katika nchi hii yote na bara hili lote 
I see this cherubim lifting up their wings. Ninaona kerubi huyu akiinua mabawa yake. And they are saying to me. Na wanasema kwangu. In our wings are the weapons of God. Katika mbawa zetu kuna silaha za Mungu. And we will stretch out our wings. Na tutanyoosha mbawa zetu. And the sword of the Lord will go forth out of the wings. Na upanga wa Mungu utapita kutoka kwenye mbawa zetu and the sword of flaming swords na upanga wa kaumoto that will not only pierce the false prophet ambao hautawakata tu manabii wa uongo but also pierce their families lakini pia utakata familia zao and burn them na kuachoma please kneel down right now piga magoti sasa hivi is cherubim says Huyu kerubi anasema Son of man E mwanadamu prophesy to these people Toa nabii kwa watu hao Say unto them Sema kwao Let he who says he is of the Lord surrender his heart and his life to the living God Yeye ajitaye kuwa yeye ni wa Bwana na asalimishe moyo wake na maisha yake kwa Mungu Let him who says he is a servant of the Lord surrender his heart and his mind unto the Lord. Yeye asemaye kwamba yeye ni mtumishi wa Mungu, asalimishe maisha yake kwa Mungu. Let them who says they are the people of God surrender their hands unto the living God. Acha wale wanaosema sisi ni watu wa Mungu wasalimishe mikono yao kwa kwenye kusudi la Mungu. I see these cherubims lifting up their huge wings. Ninaona huyu kerubi akiinua mabawa yake makubwa. Those wings are so huge that they stretch over this entire auditorium. Mbawa hizo ni kubwa sana kwamba zimefunika ukumbi huu wote. And they say, Na wanasema, To him who fears the living God. Kwake yeye anayemhofu Mungu. To him these wings will speak grace. Kwake yeye huyo mbawa hizi zitanena rehema. To them The wings of righteousness will arise with healings. Na kwao hizi mbawa za ukamilifu zitainuka na uponyaji. To him who humbles himself before the almighty God. Kwake yeye anayenyenyekea mbele za Mungu mwenye uweza. To him grace will be extended. Kwake yeye neema itafikishwa. 